What's good, folks, and welcome to another episode of the Cover One Film Room, part, of course, of the Cover One Sports Network, and presented by Nickel City Cigars. Eric, sometimes I do like little jokey intros. Sometimes we like mock who's not here, who is yeah. here, so on and so forth. Not tonight. Tonight, no, is, tonight is all business. Tonight all is business. business. Right from the get-go. Tonight is a bit of a full circle episode here on the Cover One Film Room. For those of you who regularly watch the show, which should be everyone, yes, you will know that back in February, Eric, you know this, we did a free agency target episode for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, we we did. talked about the Bills' need for someone on the interior of the defensive line who could potentially play some gap and a half, who could occupy some double teams, who could help – keep Tremaine Edmonds and Matt Milano and even some of the third level defenders clean in the, in, in the run game, be allow them to be able to play light boxes, put numbers back in coverage, but mm -hmm. still be able to fit the run. And someone who you picked, Eric, I don't, I don't remember who you picked. Who did you pick <laughs> for that episode? Uh, Mr. Daquan Jones. And uh, I tell you what, you guys are in luck tonight because Daquan <gasps> is joining us in the film room. <gasps> what is going on, Daquan? Oh, Welcome into the film room, brother. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We're like, like, like we just said offline to you, man, like this is, and like I said in the intro too, like this is legitimately like full circle, Ben, uh, a fan of yours. Well, even going back to your time before um, Buffalo and then really diving into your game tape and the film this off season and seeing the skill set that you bring and how you approach the game and just how you've come in. And again, we're not just saying it because, you know, you're here, you have been just a tremendous acquisition for this Buffalo Bills defense and what you've done individually and how you're performing and how you're having success, but also the role that you're playing, how it's unlocking so much for the rest of your teammates here on this Bills defense, on the defensive line, Edmonds and Milano, how they're able to play clean. I think it's, you know, no coincidence. Tremaine Edmonds is having arguably his best season as a Buffalo Bill, and there's been those reinforcements up front, and you're really leading that charge on the interior. So you're having a hell of a year. You're absolutely crushing it, and we know you're very busy. Got an important primetime game coming up this week. So, yeah, um, as everybody's already thrown up into the chat, yeah. I appreciate you for it. Lots of love for Daquan. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and, you know, back in June uh, during camp, uh, you talked about stopping the run, and it's something the Bills had, you know, had they've had struggles the last couple of years in certain games versus certain teams. And so going out and getting a guy like yourself was, it was crucial, as Anthony said, for many reasons, not just for stopping a run, but for uh, the pass and, and rushing the, the passer. Um, but you said back in June that stopping the run is mental. And that's easy for you to say because you're a monster. Like you're a big dude. You're a powerful dude. You're a strong dude. Everyone can see that. So it's easy for someone like you to say stopping the run is mental. Um, but this is the film room. So. Talk to us. Talk to us about your study habits and and you know leading into a matchup. What are you looking for on film uh, when you have someone uh, you know going into the matchup on Sunday, for example, against the Packers? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I watched uh, their last three games already, and I watched you know just all the run all the run clips, um, and really I just watch for like the flow of the game and, and kind of where the ball's going, and, you know, how I like to run it. So, you know, early on, I don't really watch, you know, the guy who I'm lining up against or, or, you know, where the back is. I just kind of watch the flow of the game and how they're, how they're running and how it's moving. And you kind of get in a rhythm of that in your mind. And then, you know, the next day you break down, okay, where's the running back? You know, what tight ends where are they running uh, uh, this tight end more? They're running away from that tight end. So, you know, as, as the week goes on, you get to pick up more of those, those little small details. And for me, it just helps so much when it comes to breaking down the film and, and um, you know, playing a run. You know, in, in that vein, Daquan, like of, of playing the run and your role and just playing the run in general, like this, the, this Bill's defense these past several years and continuing into this year, play a lot of light boxes. And then also, you know, being a primarily nickel defense, Taron, Taron Johnson, seeing a ton of snaps on the field and it like, even at times based on the offensive alignments and personnel, you'll see Taron Johnson like functioning as almost like a Sam linebacker yeah. at times, like in the box. Mm -hmm. Talk about the importance of, you know, your role and the defensive line in general in being able to function in this system with as many light boxes as you guys play with using, you know, primarily being a nickel defense. How important is it for you guys to win up front, given the nature of what you guys do at the second and third level? I mean, it's, it's very important because we play a, a get off um, single gap defense, right? And so, you know, it's our job to go out there every every day and every week and really get penetration and, and, and command our gap. And uh, you know, we you know, like you said, we play with a light box, so if we can go in and do that. We can 
um, be more be more multiple and show show more different looks. Um, mm-hmm. So you know, for us as the D line, we take it. We're very prideful. Uh, we go in every week and we 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 talk about what we want to do and how we need to do it. Um, so we can go out there with four guys and stop the run and and, and you know it kind of helps our defense out a lot. So it, mm-hmm. it's a it's a big job and. Like you said, Taryn, them DBs have been coming down the hill all, all season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. They, I hope they keep it up, you know, all year. But I mean, they they come down, they play that run, and it makes our job even easier. So uh, right now, we're playing, you know, p- great team defense, and we still keep it up. Yeah, and you know, the defensive tackles have done a, a great job of taking on those double teams mm-hmm. and allowing guys from the second and third levels to fill from, especially with a team like yourself that you play a lot of too high. You're playing that quarters where a, a safety may be coming from depth to cover the D gap or C gap, Taron Johnson coming from out wide to cover a, C, a B gap. Um, we see that a lot. And so those double team rates have been talked about a lot recently. This is courtesy of Seth Walder on Twitter. Um, this is the double team rate for defensive tackles along with the pass rush win rate uh, for D tackles. And you can see your name in the top right, just below Aaron Donald. So you're getting double teamed a lot, but you're also winning at an incredible rate. Uh, this this graph will be updated in the next couple of days, uh, courtesy of Seth. But this is what we have currently. But uh, Daquan hasn't changed too much as far as that chart goes over the last uh, week or so. Um, but Daquan, talk about that role in this defense and how important it is, not just for taking on those double teams, but also you know occupying those guys so that others can do their job. And more importantly, like what as as, a, as fans are watching this at home, what you know what should fans be looking for during a game when it comes to your position? I mean, that, that initial get off the ball, I mean, if, if you watch the TV copy, you can see the D-line uh, get knocked back and snap back that whole line at least a yard back. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're doing our job. I mean, you never want to you never want to look watch the TV copy and see the D-line going back into the linebacker's mm-hmm. lap. I mean, you, you're going to make their jobs harder, the, the secondary jobs harder. So, you know, the more you can get off the ball, get, uh, you know, fast violent hands into the guy's chest and uh, really anchor down, you're going to make – Everything easier. The linebackers can see everything more clear. They can play faster, come downhill, uh, get that double team off you. So, you know, the, the, the more violent you play, uh, the more it's actually going to help. So, I mean, you know, when I feel like we, we do that all across the board, no matter who's in there. So you just got to keep that going. That's a great way to put it. Like the, the violence level on this defensive line, you know, from you, from honestly, like a, a ton of the additions from you, from Tim Settle, Jordan Phillips, what Shaq Lawson adds when he brings in, and even some like returning Buffalo Bills, like AJ Epinesa and Gregory Rousseau, there seems to be like more pop and more violence on this defensive line. And, mm-hmm. you know, you're really spearheading that on the interior against the run, but also in the pass rush, you've shown a lot of pass rush pop and productivity this year, especially when given one-on-one opportunities, like you're eating and taking dude's souls on the interior there. And also what we've noticed a lot, I'm glad you like that. Uh, what we've noticed a lot too, like a lot of the two man games that you guys are playing up front and a lot of those rush games, twists, stunts, all that kind of stuff. How much of those rushes are, you know, kind of predetermined and called by the coaches and baked in versus how much are you guys improvising in the game or kind of calling it, you know, right before the snap happens based on something you're keyed into or something you're reading, you know, like how much is predetermined versus how much do you improvise? Yeah. I mean, our D line coach does a great job uh, every week, uh, giving us a, a game plan of what he wants us to do and what will work against that old line we're going up against. And, uh, you know, we have a, a handful of, of, of tricks in our bag and we'll go out there and, and whatever, you know, the, obviously the DNs are going to see it before us. Um, and we don't know if it's a certain type of check or formation, whatever. But uh, yeah, we have a we have a you know set of games we go out and go into a game with, and um, and if someone sees it, we just call out, echo it, and communicate, and, and go from there. Very well said. Very well said. And I like you mentioned, you know, some tricks in the bag. Someone who's got some tricks in the bag is our sponsor for this episode, Nickel City Cigars. You can check out the. Uh, website down in our episode show notes. Use the promo code Cover One whether online or in store, and get twenty percent off of your order. We keep talking about it every week. Their new age approach to the cigar game, all the different kinds of local craft beers and bourbons and whiskeys and things that they got in store. The arcade they have in store, all the TVs so you can chill and hang out and watch the game. In addition to what they do in this industry with the cigar game. They're cool. They're a niche down group. They take a unique approach to the cigar game and the cigar world, similar to how we take a unique approach to this Buffalo Bills content game here at Cover One. So check out Nickel City Cigars. You folks know the deal and the sponsors already. Check out the uh, website in 
the episode show notes, whether here on YouTube or any one of the podcasting apps or platforms. Eric, now it's time yeah. to do the thing. This is why we're here. This is why we're here. It's time for film. Let's have some fun. So we got five plays for you, Daquan. Uh, you guys buckle in, get your popcorn, get your beverages. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about, Daquan, is – uh, obviously you play nose tackle a lot, which, but with Oliver being out for a few games, you did rotate to three tech and some four eye at times, but I want to talk about tilted nose tackles, which you can see here. You're tilted here versus the Steelers on the next clip that we're going to break down. You're, you're not, you're more square to line of scrimmage. You're playing inside the guard there. Your eyes are on the guard. So you're kind of playing into the guard on that one. But on this play from the Steelers game, talk about the tilt versus not tilting nose tackle position. Uh, what's the purpose <laughs> And what determines that technique or alignment? Yeah, I mean, really, it's the, it's the backfield set and, and what that team is uh, going to give you that week. So right here, we got a, you know, we call it a gun near set where the, you know, the running back is to the tight end. And, you know, it's it's kind of, you know, the play around the league. You can do a couple of different things out of this formation, but teams love to run uh, the bill of the week, which you're, what you're doing here. Uh, so for me, I like to be a little tilted in my stance, uh, kind of key the outside shoulder of that center. Um, and try to really, really try to get my gap pan, just like you're circling right there, yeah. that crease, um, knowing that I'm going to get that bump block. So I like to throw my body, quick hands, but throw my body into that guard. Yeah. And absorb that hit. And talk about what that guard's trying to do by bumping you over to the center. Yeah, so in a perfect world, like if, if our linebackers weren't reacting so quickly, he wants to bump me over, trying to go up and trying to seal off uh, Milano so the running back has to kind of write uh, a downhill crease. Yeah. Uh, Right now, he's trying to bump me over. It's going to create more leverage for the center so he can kick out Milano, come back, and kind of just, you know, run run, run for a touchdown. Uh, so but I kind of knew that block was coming. Uh, so my I absorbed it. And, you know, we call it like a slingshot. So as soon as you get bumped over, yeah. you come off, you kind of pop right back in your gap, use that momentum, and uh, make the play. Yeah, slingshot. I like that. You know, I always say that's uh, you ricochet off of that uh, yeah. that block. But that, I mean, to kind of piggyback what you said about Milano, how important are those linebackers to yeah, I mean, those double teams? I mean, the faster they come downhill, what happens to that the combination block? Yeah, I mean, so if, if he was sitting back there patting his feet, it can happen a couple ways. I mean, six and I can can bump me over and kind of stay on there longer, and then that way I, I I can't I can't bump back over, and the center can come over and reach me and. Now you got a true one on one with uh, Milano and 69 with the back. So it could have been an uh, even bigger play, but you know, it helps him just be able to shuffle his feet over there, get down to his gap, and uh, make him have to react quickly. Take one. You mentioned it earlier about how fitting the run and playing the run is a team defense piece. And this here is like one small little example of it, of like, because mm -hmm. I, I feel like people don't recognize what Milano does and how he triggers, how that mm -hmm. changes the double team on you at that first level. Talk a little bit more just about how much of a team defense thing fit in, the, fit in the run is. You talked about how, you know, you have the mentality for it, but talk about really like how it, it takes pretty much everybody on the defense. You have to be gap sound, and if someone's not doing their job, it can have like a negative domino effect on the whole group. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, you look at this clip right here, you see the two technique, uh, I think at Big Phil, you know, he, he's squeezing on the double team, right, keeping uh, T-Dot back there, yep. keeping clean. Um, that Shaq at the DN, the six tech. Yep. You know, he's squeeze, he squeezing it off, so you know the running back can't cut back. So that whole that whole side of the line right now is good. I mean, right here, AJ got a little pass read, so he went on field. But in the perfect world, he wants to set that edge and kind of choke out that tackle. Um, but I mean, what Matt doing right here, me able to declare that tackle, uh, guard coming off, just made my job a lot easier and uh, for me to come up and make that play. So I mean, right here, the perfect example of all of us playing our uh, doing our one eleven and, and and you know stopping run. Yeah, I love that. And so on that play, you're tilted, playing more of a shade. This one, uh, I mean, it could be inside the guard there. It could be more of a G uh, look here. But uh, you're square to the line of scrimmage. Your your uh, eyes are on that guard. It appears like you're going to play into the guard, and, and you do. So talk to us about uh, your technique and alignment here, being more square versus tilted uh, compared to the last play. Yeah, so uh, this week uh, in this game plan, um, they, they tend to run the ball a little more to the open side. and. Uh, that bump block we saw against the Steelers, they did that a lot, but they actually stood on it. So uh, it kind of made more sense to kind of switch it up in the game and give them a different look. And then uh, they kind of did the same concept, but kind of reversed it. So normally if you play a, a, a two-eye here, like what we're playing, uh, you kind of play it like a three technique. You want to be, you know, very aggressive and, and try to get off and get knocked back. Mm. Uh, but in, in doing so, you know you're going to get that kind of same play we got um, the last clip. But we're kind of vice versa going inside. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we kind of knew we we're gonna get this get this um, this bump here in the two eye. 
So again, come off the ball, kind of brace for it, kind of wait for him to leave, uh, make sure my my, my lockout is kind of kind of firm, and come over and make the tackle. Daguan, talk about you know it, you mentioned earlier how you guys are, and this has been like a, a really a Bills defensive line staple under Leslie Frazier and Sean McDermott, more of that like one gap penetrating, um, aggressive off the ball type of style. But we've noticed a little more on this defensive line this year, in particular with like your role, you almost have more like a, a bit of a more gap and a half responsibility to your game where you're coming off and you're you're aggressive and you're getting that first touch but you're also like you just mentioned like kind of waiting and seeing what's happening and make a play on the ball talk about the difference in kind of just getting upfield right away and being a penetrator versus being aggressive off the snap but then still having to read what's going on in front of you and maintaining gap soundness yeah that, I mean that might be a little just a uh, uh, tough ball to break for me uh, you know playing a two gap you know all these years yeah. Um, but at the same time, you want to be able to get off in your gap and, and get control of your guy and then, you know, be greedy, right? You want to make the play. You want to be able to help help out, you know, because if you're in your gap but the linebacker gets blocked or, you know, the two technique trips or whatever, you got to cover your brother, right? You got to cover mm-hmm. your brother. So the more you can do um, but doing your job, not doing too much but doing your job, it's, it's kind of what the, the D-line is asked to do uh, day in and day out. And right here, just an example of that coming off the ball and, uh, strong, violent hands, and, and being able to to ricochet back inside and come off and make tackle. Yeah, and I love that mentality of, you know, you want to do your job, but you also want to make a play. And you guys, especially inside, are making those plays, not just keeping guys free, but you're also making uh, a lot of tackles uh, for loss there. I mean, you are ranked right now in run stop percentage, courtesy of PFF, ninth overall at 11.8%. You have eight run stops. Um, the team itself overall and run stop win, win uh, run stop win rate is ninth overall as well. So you guys are doing a great job against the run, um, but you you're also making plays yourself uh, in the backfield. And same with Jordan Phillips and and Settle as well, and even Ed Oliver's you know getting back into the fold. Um, but I love that mentality because as Anthony said, you know sometimes you guys are in in those light boxes and um, you know a guy may get bumped out of his gap, and now you have to make it right a lot of the times. And um, you, you've done that several times this year. Uh, the next play I want to take a look at, Daquan, is a single back power run from right to left on the screen. Uh, you're inside the guard here. And, you know, when teams run gap runs like this, this power run uh, from right to left, uh, they're essentially taking a gap away from your side of the field here, the wide side of the field, and, you know, adding one to the opposite side. So talk to us about the importance of your role on this play as a backside D tackle, maybe uh, what you saw on film or in the game that uh, led to this uh, big stop here on Clyde Edwards Lair. Yeah. So no, normally in this um, situation, uh, the nose guard will come off the ball and really squeeze that center to kind of close off that gap between right. uh, 62 and the, and the three technique. Right. So we want to try to condense that down um, as much as we can to really force that running back to either bounce it outside or bounce it back in uh, to you for the tackle. Um, you know, but this play right here, you know, from film study, they ran it a couple times, not a lot of times. Um, I think they ran it like two plays before the play action pass. Um, and I just told myself that they do it again, I'm going to take it. Um, and, uh, you know, I got that the black back pull the formation and I saw the run back keep the ball. So I just kind of swam over and, and um, made a play. You mentioned a couple of times so far, like your, your prep process and film study and how that allows you to key in on something. Walk us through. Uh, you know, don't give away any secrets to, you know, what makes you you, but walk mm-hmm. us through a little bit, if you can, of, of what your film study process is during the week. What do you, are you looking to key in on specific things? Is it based more on matchup or do you kind of have like a specific process and rhythm and routine you work through like every week when you're chopping everything up and figuring out your plan? Yeah, I kind of just, I watched, you know, a, a couple games and I, I kind of see what the flow of the offense is doing. Um, it's just been my thing my whole career. I just kind of just watch and see, you know, what they're doing, what formations they like to do, and um, and, and what one plays are coming out of that. Um, and then, you know, we go to practice. I, I like to see what the coaches have because, you know, they see different, um, you know, having a um, second pair of eyes that you always mm-hmm. see stuff differently. So to be able to go and practice and see what they see, and if it matches up, then I'll continue to go back to the film and do that. And then, you know, as the week goes on, I break it down individually and watch, you know, 62 or if it's Humphrey, mm-hmm. whatever it is, and break that guy down uh, even further. No, good stuff. And so those were the three run plays we're going to take a look at. But uh, now we want to get a couple uh, pass rushes in here. Um, and so I, I want to talk about how well, like we watched all the film on you and we've noticed that you have a very good uh, understanding of pass protection rules, whether it's 
the guy in front of you that's going to block you. You understand who that guy is going to be, first of all, where he is on the protection, whether it's, you know, a, a three, uh, like a four man slide to, uh, to one side, whether it's a, a two or three jet where they do three to one side, man to the other. Um, regardless of what type of protection offenses are thrown at you, you seem to have a very good understanding of the protection, but more importantly, how to attack it from your position or your role. Um, and, and this play, it really aligns with that. You see Ricard, more of like a blocking guy that they use on chips and check downs and releases. And he'll, he'll chip and sometimes just check down uh, underneath, you know, three to five yards and kind of be an outlet for Lamar. But this is an empty set. He motions out kind of uh, into that wing into uh, normally that like chip alignment. So right now, yes, there's five offensive linemen, but they also had Ricard in there. So it's more than likely you're expecting, I'd imagine, that you know it's going to be a six-man protection given given the look here and the personnel. So talk about your alignment here and your responsibility uh, versus this and maybe anything that you saw, uh, on, again, on film or in the game. Yeah, I mean, with my alignment here, we're, we're definitely thinking pass um, with 42 right there um, in the backfield. Then when he motioned up over there, he, he kind of put himself in a chip alignment. Um, and as soon as he got over there, you know, Greg Russo told me to hit it, hit it, hit it. Um, so when he tells me that, I'm just trying to charge as hard as I can, as fast as I can in that B-gap and kind of open up the shoulder of that tack, uh, that guard, uh, allowing Greg Russo to kind of wrap free. You know, and Tim Settle does a great job over there in, in, in the shade of occupying that center. Um, it's kind of the same look uh, here where, where Tim Settle can really win on that edge if he wants to. Um, but he did a good job here of just kind of popping that, making sure that um, we have a pocket for uh, Lamar. And, um, you know, yeah, just open up the shoulder, Greg Beautiful. Russo came over free and – the beautiful play you've been excellent on stunts and twists this year like like we've talked about and this is a, a prime example and you mentioned it already like how you attack that shoulder of the right guard and kind of open him up talk about the difference and we we've broken it down a lot on this show so we'd love to get like your input with it as well like talk about your role there and how it differs with you're the spiker versus the looper and how you're trying to attack and open things up as that spiker but you know, like what you said earlier, also trying to make a play yourself. Like, how do you live in that world, and how do you attack when you're the spiker like this? Um, you know, although it's told, you know, from early uh, early on in my career, just, you know, play within the framework of the defense, right? So, you know, I feel like every play I'm on the field, like, it's, it's a play for me to make, uh, no matter what the call is. So even right here, when he said hit it, hit it, I know I'm going against Lamar. I know he's fast. So I'm trying to, you know, run as fast as I can that B gap, do my job of occupying that guard as much as I can for Greg. But at the same time, I'm trying to run out there for, for contain just in case Greg doesn't get him. I have to you have to replace him, right? Yeah. So, you know, for me, I'm trying to run uh, as fast as I can up there and trying to force my way through. So I can get up to his upfield shoulder to kind of force him to step up where he can't feel like he can kind of spin out of there. That's a great point, too. Like, real quick, touch on how much of a mental piece is it for you when you're playing a quarterback like Lamar or even Patrick Mahomes, dudes who you know are mobile and can extend the play and can kill you out of structure. How does that change your rush mentality versus a guy that's, you know, more, not that there's too many like statue quarterbacks left, but dudes that are true threats with their legs. How much does that change your mentality? How much of a conscious focus is that when you're rushing the quarterback? I mean, it's definitely annoying. I mean, you know, <laughs> you, you hear all along, uh, all across the league with people like, we're not going to, you know, change the way we rush. And we really don't. But at the same time, it's annoying when they, when they get one or two runs on you, it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, you got at the same time they you know, they get paid too, and you know, he's yeah. a freaking a freak athlete when with, with uh, the ball in his hand. So you know, it's gonna happen. You know, sometimes you are gonna get the bear, and then the bear gets you. Um, it kind of you know is what it is. But um, just to be extra, you know, you know, locked in on what your job is and what and what the the, the scheme of the day is, and you know what you're trying to go out there and execute, um, will really help that out. Yeah, and uh, one final question on this play, and it's kind of a segue to the next play, but um, talk about your alignment because it seems like Leslie Frazier, it's something we talked about in the offseason and, and told fans to keep an eye on are, are wider alignments. It hasn't really been a character uh, of the defense um, in prior years because they're so uh, worried about – they were more like com let's compress the pocket and – rush lane integrity, but you guys are running a lot more games. You're playing a little more free, a lot more wide alignments. I mean, we're seeing so many more uh, wide nine alignments from Vaughn and Rousseau. Uh, so talk about the alignment, how important it is to rush in the quarterback and why it's important when you have guards that have to kick out to meet you rather than you coming to them. 
Yeah, I mean, if I was tired of hearing my alignment, um, you know, that that guard is, you know, he, he's, he's a pretty good guard and yeah. pretty strong hands. And, you know, the tighter you are in the pass rush situation, the more he can kind of – his job is easier, right? He can kind of right. watch his hands and grab you, and now you're stuck there. Now, you, now you're letting your guys on the outside down because – if they have a good rush and make them step up, now you can't get off it, right? Now you're, now you're, you know, you're chest to chest with a guy, yeah. you know, trying to f- struggle to come off it. When you can back off the ball, give yourself some room, and really, you know, make them respect your speed, and um, you know, get upfield and then rock them with power, or get upfield and him with a finesse move, and uh, kind of be able to work off and see your ends a little better too, and um, make sure it makes the whole picture come together. Yeah, and so as I said, uh, that's kind of a segue for this play um, against the Rams. And this is a, g- a game, really, you guys all ate in this game. Uh, the And speaking of games, you have a game off the left side of the screen here with Jordan Phillips, A.J. Epinesa. Uh, but you're uh, just inside the guard here, um, and you have Von Miller out wide to your left. Um, I want you to talk about the uh, the move here. And again, what, you know, maybe the center you're playing against and how that played into the power move that you set here. And it's one thing that we talked about offline before going live here is your ability to use to win first touch, but also to use that power to pry open holes here or pry open protections. Uh, so talk about uh, how you win with that leverage and, you know, how you were able to win this rep uh, with the guard kind of peeking out to Von Miller. Yeah. So in this clip right here, we got a game to the right, like you said, um, with Phil and AJ. Um, so I knew I, I can I can be a little wider to let that game breathe. So um, I, I widened out a little bit more in like a two-eye alignment, but still in the shade. Um, you know, Vaughn has two sacks at this point, I believe. So, you know, they've been, they've been kind of helping out to run out to him all game. So I, I knew he was going to go out there, but all a matter of, of when. So I kind of, you know, if you play, play it back and go last beat, I kind of pace my steps a little bit, uh, kind of yeah. one, two. And then as soon as I see him go away, I, I go to power. So um, as soon as I see him go away, I, I go to power and kind of just pr- kind of pry that shoulder open. Uh, you know, when they get in that position right there, they try to, you know, re-anchor, sit down and use that uh, offhand. And I know he's going to try to do that. So I kind of did a pullover mm. um, and, yeah, and got to the quarterback with the guys. Daquan, we had Mitch Morse and Ryan Bates on the show in the off season, And mm-hmm. one of the things they each talked about was how, like, during games, they're kind of making mental notes of, okay, like on, I'm facing, you know, this guy again. And last time on third down, he used this move and I did this. And they're kind of like cataloging things, almost like the way, like, a like, I, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. like how a pitcher will be like, you know, last time I had him 0-2, I threw him a curveball in the dirt. He might be thinking that now I'm going to throw him a fastball inside, so on and so forth. How much do you do that as an interior defensive lineman or on the D line in general, like, are you cataloging what, like, okay, last time I was lined up like this, I beat him with this, or, you know, he was, he was susceptible to a power move last time. Should I try that again? Like how much are you cataloging and planning like your moves as you're operating in the game against your opponent? Yeah. I mean, I, that's, that's what makes, uh, you know, your setup move so important. So yes, I do do that. I mean, you go out there and, you know, you, you, you see on film what they do, but at the same time they're watching what you do. Yeah. Right. So whatever I go to first, they're probably gonna try to take that away off off the rib. So um, you know, you, that's where you see all the all the great people like Von Miller, right? Like here go out there and do a couple of different moves, but you know, when the game's online, he's probably gonna hit you with bread and butter, right? So mm-hmm. like um, you know, you gotta set someone up the whole the whole game with with with, with rush it. That that's what makes it so important to be able to go out there and stop the run and make people pass because if you can have them passing forty times a you know, a game, you're gonna get in a rhythm kinda, you know, when is he gonna do it for what protection is it gonna, you know, hit, hit you with a, you know, you gonna give you a hand or not, or you know what I mean? Like so, yeah. it all depends on, you know, how often they're gonna pass the ball, um, how often you can get them to pass the ball, um, that you can really set up your stuff. It kind of it's kind of hard in the games where you know they don't pass the ball a lot and they can kind of be two dimensional and run the ball, pass the ball. You can't really get in a rhythm, but um, you know it's, it's very important to go out there and if you get them to pass the ball, kind of set up your your rush and then game on the line when you need to go get it, pull it out. I have another follow-up to that. This is – so every, everybody – fans, I think everybody today sees this as like a passing NFL and quarterback-driven and passing, passing, passing. And you mm-hmm. talked about in that moment right now, just breaking down um, that last question I asked you, like how important it is to be able to stop the run. Mm-hmm. Talk about how important that is today still, even in a day where it's a pass-first league and so on and so forth. Talk about how important it is to stop the run and also how 
like the coverages that your defense plays, how it stems from you being able to stop the run and fit the run with those light boxes and with those numbers. Just talk about how really important that is, even though everybody thinks like, well, you just got to stop the pass, but it really starts with stopping the run. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, you can pass the ball all you want, right? But uh, I think it's, it's crucial. I mean, they say defense win championships all the time, and, and, and when you get to playoff football, it's all about – who can run the football and who and, and who can stop the run, right? I mean, it, it literally comes down to that. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, uh, at some point, you're going to have to run the ball. And, you know, if you can go out there and yeah, I don't care if a team run the ball five times, they don't get any yard. You know what I mean? That's going to be a men- your mentality the whole time. And if they can do that and make them truly one-dimensional, um, you can bring your ears back. I mean, you think about, you know, the front we have and, you know, you know Big Phil and Vaughn and, you know, you, you throw the ball 40 times a game, they're going to get home eventually. You know, we're all, we all are. So, like, um, it's kind of like pick your poison, but I just think it's so important for teams to be able to run the ball and stop the ball. And, um, you know, we're doing a great job of that right now. Um, so it's very important. So uh, one quick question about in-game adjustments. Um, you know, we always see the offensive side of the ball when they come off and they got this, the Microsoft surfaces and they're looking at pictures. Um, you know, obviously more times than not, what coverage is the defense is running. When you guys as a defense, or specifically a defensive line, when you guys come off the field, what are you guys looking at? Are you grabbing those uh, tablets as well and, and studying things? And if so, what are you studying from drive to drive? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm more like a, um, you know, I like to talk to the guys who just come off the field. Or if I go out there, I'll give them my feedback, what I what I see, what they're doing, um, if they're giving line calls or anything like that. I, I try to give them all the information I can um, coming off the field and vice versa. Like, you know, some teams – you know, they pick and choose what they want to do. So, uh, you know, if Bomb down the field or some or Ed's not on the field, they might do a different run scheme to take advantage of that, right? So, like, you got to keep talking all game to see what you're getting because, we you know, we'll go Monday to watch film and there'll be a block scheme that uh, someone got that I didn't get all game. You know what mm-hmm, I mean? So, mm-hmm. it's just um, just commu- uh, constant communication with, with your D-line guys and seeing what they got, uh, what, what they got going on out there and, and just trying to stay on top of it. But we do watch the iPads too, but it's hard when – you know, yeah. you, you'll, you'll freeze it and what the hell is this? <laughs> so, like, you know, it's better just to talk it out for me. Yeah, it's a little different, especially when, you know, quarterbacks are looking pre to post snap so you can see a lot more movement. Uh, you're not, you're not, you know, watching an entire unit of five guys or six guys in pass protection uh, working together in that way. Uh, one final question. Um, it's something that we talked about during the week on social media on, you know, I know it happens and I, I want to ask you personally, um, when you are studying a game, you know, at the beginning of the week, do you guys ever watch the broadcast or TV copy looking for pass protections? Cause it's something that we pick up on when we're watching back games. Um, and I know it happens. Um, and I know teams change the protection names and they change hand signals for coverages and stuff like that. But a lot of teams keep them the same and a lot of terms, Hey, five Oh protection, Hawaii five Oh, there are different, uh, dose. Like there are different, uh, protection names for that where if someone's using it at the line of scrimmage you're like i know it's 5-0 protection i know it's yeah. man on man so uh you know do you ever you know take a peek or listen to tv copy to get kind of get some of those signals not necessarily to rely on them but to get an idea when you're about to rush and you you hear it in a game that you you know the protection that's coming and what you need to do to beat that man in front of you yeah i mean i, I know i i do personally like we you know every week you have a kgb report and you kind of go over you know, the calls and stuff like that. But for me, I, I, I sit there, you know, on my Fridays and Saturdays, and I kind of just listen to the to the cadence and the rhythm of it. Um, it it's just like, you know, when you get a, a, a new center in there, a new alignment in there, and you know, or a new quarterback, and, and you know, we get offside, the false starts from the O-line um, because they're not used to it. For me, I just try to get used to the, to the rhythm of it, what they're saying. Um, and, yeah, sometimes you can pick up on, you know, the past tips or um, – the protection tips like that, but they change it up every week. Yeah, like you said, but in the game, you kind of, kind of hear and kind of figure out what they're doing sometimes. But you know, the good, the good old lines and the good center, they talk before they go to the line and, and, and make it that much harder. But yeah. Uh, yeah, for me, I like to listen to it because you know, kind of when I go into game day, it's not the first time me hearing it, and kind of, you know, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, you, you're trying to find an edge. Like you, you I mean, you, you want to get a little something, something. Yeah, you, yeah. you also made Eric's day. Cause Eric, Eric watches the TV copy on like a hundred, a hundred volume yeah. and is listening for offenses and defensive calls and like yeah. taking notes. So that way he can go back and be like, okay, like at this timestamp, 
they, you know, they said gold. Okay. Yeah. What did they do after? Okay. Did they say right. gold in another game? What did that mean? And he's like charting and trying to decipher every, like he's a code breaker. So you like made yeah. his day that you do that. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely part of, part of the breakdown in the game. Yeah. Probably. That's scouting. That's like scouting one one. Yeah, yeah. And it's not cheating. That's just, that's just no, part no. of the game. Every, every, every team does it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's part of, part of the, the, the routine now. Yeah, that it is, man. Awesome. Daquan, this, I told you in the beginning, like how much of a treat it was for us to have you on with, you know, us, us eyeballing you back in like February. And then you come into this team and just being everything and more that we had hoped you would be with your skill set, your role and how, you know, you've, you've made this Buffalo Bills defense so much better. But I think even more than that was how awesome you were in this episode, yeah, like your insight. You. Yeah. Like, again, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time with us. We know you're just coming off the bye week and chilling back home. Now you're back into business as you guys, uh, you know, have that primetime game against green Bay. So one, thank you very much for taking the time to sit with us, talk to us. Thanks for chopping it up on Twitter, uh, with us in the DMS and just out in the Twitter verse and all that. And again, just absolutely crushing it tonight. Your insight, your level of knowledge, how you approach the game. It's, always super enjoyable and insightful for guys like myself and Eric. We, we grind the tape and we study the X's and O's and scheme and structure. So to be able to sit down and break it down with someone of your caliber is a huge treat for us and all our fans. So again, man, thank you very much for taking the time and just absolutely rocking it tonight. We appreciate the hell out of you. No, no problem, man. Thanks for having me guys. I, I really appreciate it. Thank Thanks, Saquon. Yeah. Hell yeah. Have a good one, man. We'll see you uh, on the Twitterverse and keep crushing it this year. We wish you the <laughs> best. Right, thank yep. you guys. Yep. Later. Yeah, good stuff, man. Uh, those are those are the best. Uh, it just you know because we flap our gums every week on here. We flap our gums on Twitter. Like we you know try to teach as best we can with the knowledge that we have, and it just it's so much better just to hear it from the players. And when they can come in here and translate the game, a complicated game, and make it simple for the average fan mm -hmm. in the film room with us. I mean, that's why we do what we do and that's why we started cover one so um it's always awesome to get uh guys like daquan that can you know throw the verbiage out there and walk us through a play uh verbally uh it, it just doesn't get better than that and uh obviously a really really good guy too hell yeah and it's also really beautiful when like he organically says things that we've been saying and it's yeah. like oh see we were right and those little pieces <laughs> but they just like tie it to him like he not even just because we we had him on the show. Like he's been having a phenomenal year for this Bills defense. You showed, mm -hmm. you know, the productivity while still having arguably like the highest double team rate on the interior wow. and the echelon that he's in with the Aaron Donalds of the world. Like he's getting double teamed like crazy. And then you factor in the injuries up front. Ed Oliver has been banged up. Settle's been banged up. Phillips has been banged up. He was leading. He still leads this Buffalo Bills defense in snap count on the defensive yeah. line. He's consistent. Um, That's why you stay exactly. on the field if you're consistent. And he's versatile. Like I said, he when Oliver was out, they were bumping Phillips and uh, you know out to three tech a lot. Back in the nose tackle, they're they were rotating those guys at all positions. Um, I don't know what happened there. It looked like we got cut out there for a second, but yeah, uh, it came back. Um, yeah, so it was uh, it, it was nice to to see um, you know that on film too, and and all of those reps. I mean, he's got the reps because he's consistent, and yeah, um, it, it's just been it's been great because again, it was more of a you know validation for us. Yeah. Um, but uh, I do want to talk about you know his power, his strength. That's great, and same with Jordan Phillips when he's healthy. He's he's a hard. He's difficult to move. Yes. Like these, and when they're both in there, it's very difficult to move those guys. Uh, when we're talking stopping the run, and even more so than you know when Ed Oliver's in there, and that's something that you know you're starting to hear some rumblings about that. Um, you know, I know Ed Oliver's not quite healthy yet, but mm. I mean they make a difference in there, and that not just you know Ed Oliver's strong; he's as strong as these guys, yeah. but he doesn't have the what the the width and girth yeah. of these guys. So there are times where Ed Oliver, when those bang blocks that you saw on Daquan come to hit Ed Oliver, they're bouncing him to the turf. And and so, and that's just a natural thing when you're that size and, yeah. and, and you know, that weight. Um, so talk about that, man, because they are bigger defensive tackles and it's really paid off for the linebackers. It really has. Oh, tremendously. And, you know, just to like 
not to even bag on Ed Oliver with it, but like that his size combined with his skill set, like we saw it. Granted, it was like a specific game plan and scheme, but we saw it last year in that Colts game. They're just running trap and wham, and and Jack Doyle is just clearing Ed Oliver yeah. out left and right, partially because of his size, but also because of how how aggressive he was and how he attacks and how he got upfield so quickly. And then you fast forward to this year, and exactly like you said. How how they're playing and holding things up and gumming up the works and muddying up the line mm-hmm. to allow Milano and Edmonds and Taron Johnson and the second level defenders to play free. That was why you know you you pegged Daquan Jones, but we all you myself and Kendall we all had players in his mold and in that skill set for this specific reason for the idea of being able to gum up the works up front and allowing your fast and athletic defenders on the second level, being able to eat and play free. And I think you're seeing it this year. We're seeing more sideline plays from Tremaine Edmonds. We're seeing him have to two gap less. We're seeing Matt Milano being able to shoot gaps, but he's shooting gaps cleanly because what, just like you said, Daquan Jones is sitting there strong at the point of attack, taking on, two offensive linemen. And we're seeing that with Jordan Phillips. We're seeing that with Tim Settle. You're seeing these guys just occupy multiple blockers, which muddies the waters for the offensive line. And that keeps things clean for Tremaine Edmonds, Matt Milano, and whoever is flowing. And then you add on top of it too, like these guys that are also muddy in the waters, like Daquan Jones and crew are also making individual plays. Like when, yeah. guy, when the double team leaves, they win their matchup. Like, yeah. so what do you They're do? making the jobs of the linebackers so much easier. Yes. And, and like I talked about when we're live with him is, you know, there are times where, you know, a defensive tackle or DN may get bumped out of their gap and a linebacker is supposed to make it right. Like yeah. people don't understand that happens. Um, and the linebacker is not just reading the flow of the play and where the ball's going, but he's also reading what's happening in front of him. If a guy gets bumped uh, into the linebacker's gap, the linebacker has to replace him yeah, the, the defensive tackle's gap. So they're they're charged with and responsible for making it right is what the linebacker uh, coaches and defensive coaches call it, making it right. But we're seeing that from the defensive tackles. Yes. That's what's crazy. They're, again, you talked about that gap and a half. They're playing that half a gap that belongs to a linebacker, and linebackers are just standing there like, well, geez, this is easy. Yes, because, I'll just make the play. Yeah, I'll just make the play. So um, it, it's been great to see because it's what the Bills have needed. And I think Bean admitted that, you know, over the summer and uh, last year uh, in, in like their exit uh, press conferences and whatnot, how they needed yeah. some beef up the middle. And I think these guys are making that difference exactly uh, as Bean had intended. Yeah, and they're executing individually. They're executing within the team, playing that def- team defense role. And like you mentioned and I mentioned and Daquan mentioned, the violence at which they're playing with up front, it's – it's really making a big difference for this Buffalo Bills defense. And so it was it was tremendous to not only have another Buffalo Bill on this uh, show here, but to be able to have one that's been so impactful for the mm-hmm. team this year and that's made such a difference. And Had a position I, that we can't really see on broadcast. That's yes. the other thing. Like to have, We love having the guys from the trenches, offense and defensive line, but we love it because of the chess match, but we also love it because it's not something that the average fan mm-hmm. can really take in during a broadcast copy. So to have him in was just awesome. We love guys in the trenches and they don't get enough praise, especially when we're talking nose tackles and shade nose tackles. Yeah. Especially like, I suppose like the, the bigger body dudes inside, I feel like a lot of it, uh, people just see them as like, Oh, a space eater or this physical guy. And they are, but then you hear Daquan speak and you hear the football IQ and the football intellect and how he approaches the game and what he studies mentally and how he's preparing and how he's adjusting and what he's doing and how he reads the game and studies the game. And yeah, an, an absolute thrill to have on the show and a tremendous guest on the tremendous week as the Bills head into a primetime home game against the Green Bay Packers and look to continue uh, this strong start for the Buffalo Bills here. And Eric, We've had a bit of a strong start here in 2022, and we mm-hmm. also we also have all this awesome content here on Cover One, and some of it is just like regular, and then some of it is special, and like the Cover One One Pass. Eric, if somebody said, "Wait a minute, what is One Pass?" What would you tell them? Um, the best content on the internet. No, mm-hmm. um, it, it's it's ever. it's our premium subscription. Uh, as you can see, it's 57 bucks for the year. Uh, you if you become an insider and join our crew. Uh, you're going to get a free t-shirt. You're going to get a decal. Um, you're going to get all of those things listed on the right side there, the Slack channel, the behind the scenes content. And when we're talking behind the scenes stuff, if you guys aren't subscribers, you missed out on uh, Uncovered, which was our first episode um, over the weekend on Sunday. We did a couple hours talking about uh, the scouting process, kind of our methods, our processes 
um, and, and, and how we do things, you know, looking at matchups, whether pre or post game, um, the different tools and resources we use at cover one. Um, and, and it was fun, Anthony. I, I think that is the type of content that uh, we want to do more and we can't do it without you guys supporting us. Uh, obviously your subscriptions um, support us and our writers on and, and the website, but they also give us the tools and resources such as the film uh, program that we use huddle uh, to break down film with Daquan um, to make graphics, like everything that you see on these shows across the network throughout the week. Uh, we're able to do it because of the tools and resources that we um, we get via our subscribers. So uh, if you're not an insider yet, join for 57 bucks for the year. Uh, you'll get the T-shirt, the decal, and all of those things listed on the screen there. But um, uh, you'll get access to us in the Slack channel all the time. And again, that behind-the-scenes content that uh, if you're into scouting, you're into evaluation, uh, you're going to want to become an insider. You're going to have access to the glossary and things like that, right, Ant? Yeah, that's that huge piece of, you know, what we do in the cover one glossary, breaking down techniques and and play design and things that you hear or see in the game that are mentioned, like in passing on the broadcast, but we break them down. What do they mean? Like, Oh, you hear, you know, the Tony Romo say, Oh, simulated pressure. Well, actually he wouldn't say that because he doesn't get in that kind of detail, but someone will say simulated pressure. Oh, we got something in the cover one glossary. For yeah. simulated pressure. Oh, how fantastic. And again, that uncovered series, you know, we're excited about that. And that maiden voyage episode we had this past Sunday, a lot of that came from, what we get from the Slack channel and our subscribers and the insiders yeah. who ask like, Oh, how do you, how do you figure this out? Or how do you find that? Or what's your process for figuring this out? And how do you come to this conclusion? And we walked everybody through that for, for our insiders, um, you know, based on what they wanted. We walked them through that this past yeah. Sunday in that, in that uncovered series, how we go down the rabbit hole with advanced metrics and analytics, how we pair that together with film. What does the process look like step by step? Um, giving everybody a peek into the world of what coaches and scouts do on a weekly basis and putting game plans together and self scouting and scouting opponents and everything that they really do to put things together. Um, that was absolutely tremendous. And this is a good call out from Calgary Mafia. He says 81 likes for a video that had Daquan uh, come Jones. Come on now. Better. You folks can do better. I'm not going to lie. That hurts my heart a little bit. We got 108 people in here right now still. There should be at least 108 likes. This at least. Come on, guys. Let's go. A little bit. Guys and girls. It's a little bit. <laughs> it's a little bit disappointing. But what wasn't disappointing, Eric, again, Daquan Jones absolutely crushed it. Another great episode in this film room series. Not bad for uh, – for a bye week episode of the uh, cover one film, not bad to bring on somebody who's been a tremendous free agent acquisition and a tremendous positive domino effect for the Bills defense. Yeah, good stuff uh, all around. Uh, we're going to try to keep bringing on guys uh, from the team over the course of the year uh, when we see openings. Um, and and tr trust me, we're working the phones, right? We're working the phones yeah. every week. Uh, it doesn't always come to fruition, but um, as Jeff said, he did his one one eleven. So get in there, hit the likes. Stalk the ground said I smashed that like before it even started. That's the right approach. That's what we want to hear. That's what we want to hear. Let's not just support us, but support Daquan taking time out of his day Hell to yeah. come in here and drop some knowledge on you guys. Um, no, yeah. Like, comment, share, uh, become an insider uh, through our uh, cover uh, one pass uh, over at cover one dot football. Um, again, we couldn't do this without you guys. And if all you can do is share the video, we'll take it. We'll take it. If all you can do is hit that like button, we'll take it. Anything and everything um, that you can do to help us trend, as Anthony always says, um, we'll take it. Yeah, every ounce of support is is supported. So if you are here, or appreciate it, I should say. So if you're here on YouTube right now watching live or watching post live, watching it recorded, please drop a like on this video. It goes a long way towards helping us to track and trend in front of more eyes and ears. Please also subscribe to the Cover One Film Room, and to the Cover One channel as a whole. We have you covered literally every single day of the week with tremendous content, anything and everything Buffalo Bills, but also peeks into different areas of the NFL and football as a whole. Our goal with this show and with a large portion of the brand is to make you a smarter and more well-educated football fan to allow you to enjoy the game that you already love, to allow you to enjoy it even further and take your knowledge and your love for this game even further. If you're listening on one of the podcasting apps or platforms, that's awesome too. Please rate and review and subscribe there as well. Tell your family and friends and loved ones about how awesome this show is. If you thought this show was terrible, tell your enemies and try and ruin their day with a horrible thing. We appreciate you folks regardless. We hope you and your family and friends and loved ones are all doing well, taking care of one another, being kind to one another. Strap in 
for this upcoming Sunday, prime time. For those of you going to the game, mm-hmm. enjoy. It's going to be a long tailgate day. I'm assuming people are going to be showing up at 11 at noon, and it's going to be a long day of day drinking, rallying into that prime time night action against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We will see you next week for myself. Anthony Prohaska, and for Mr. Eric Turner, the godfather and founder of Cover One. This has been another episode of the Cover One Film Room. Godspeed, and as always, go Bills.